Everybody's is good. Okay, great. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us again here today. Uh, as always, I am here with my fellow commissioners. Uh, I am Dr. Val Arkush, Chair of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners, and here with me is the Vice Chair of our Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Ken Lawrence and Commissioner Joe Gale. We also have Dr. Alvin Wong, our Regional Emergency Medical Services Director, and Dr. Brenda Weiss from our Office of Public Health. And this is Sarah, who will be doing our sign language interpretation with us today. Thank you. Uh, so, as I uh, continue to say, the situation here in Montgomery County with the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 disease, continues to be rapidly evolving. I do not have complete information about everything that I'm going to tell you about today, but I will do my best to answer your questions. I may not be able to fully answer all of your questions. Since our press conference yesterday afternoon, we have had one new presumptive positive case of COVID-19 in Montgomery County, which brings our total to nine. This individual is an adult male, 35 years old, who resides in Perkiomen Township. His symptoms do not require hospitalization and he is currently at home being monitored. This individual had direct contact with a previously announced presumptive positive individual. This individual is a police officer in the Lower Providence Police Department. Contact tracing is underway. There is a second presumptive positive case. This is a 61-year-old male from another state, currently hospitalized in Montgomery County. Contact tracing is underway for that individual, and that, that has just begun. I do want to be clear that individuals are being counted where they reside. Therefore, this person will not be part of our count here in Montgomery County. So our count is at nine. We have one new Montgomery County resident from yesterday to today. As you are aware, Philadelphia announced their first presumptive positive case yesterday. <clears throat> Although this individual lives in Philadelphia and is being counted in Philadelphia, we are aware that this individual works in Montgomery County and the State Department of Health is handling the contact tracing for that individual. Just a reminder that State Department of Health is releasing test results at noon, 4 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. And I just want to review a couple of things for folks that are listening. The symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. If you have these symptoms, I cannot stress it enough. We need you to stay home and call a healthcare provider. Please do not show up unannounced at your doctor's office or any of our hospital emergency departments. It's critically important that we keep our medical staff safe. So please make sure they know that you are coming before you come so they can take all the proper precautions. If you are in serious distress or you feel your symptoms are life-threatening, call 911. Our emergency medicine professionals are prepared and ready to come and take you and transport you safely. We continue our call to our local employers to please offer sick pay if you don't currently offer it now. Even if that is a temporary policy, we do not want people coming to work because they must do so in order to maintain the economic security of their families. So I just can't stress enough how important it is that you try to offer sick pay to your employees. Many questions persist about the difference between coronavirus and the flu. Coronavirus is not the flu virus. It's a completely different virus. They are unrelated. What that means is the flu vaccine does not protect you or prevent you from acquiring COVID-19. There is also no vaccine for COVID-19 and there are no treatments for COVID-19 other than medications that are uh, supportive, such as a medication to bring down a fever or a medication to soothe your cough. 
but there's no other direct medications for this disease. I want to remind everybody, and this is probably the most important thing, that no one needs to panic that 80% of the people who get this disease have mild symptoms and will recover fully. The individuals that are most at risk are the elderly, anyone with a serious underlying medical condition, and anyone who is immunocompromised. And that is why we are asking our community to be smart and to be safe for the sake of these individuals who are at risk of serious consequences of this disease and for which there is no direct treatment. We have to all work together to keep everybody in our community safe. Many people are continuing to ask, when is someone contagious? Because this is a brand new virus, we do not have extensive information or science behind this, but here's the latest from the Centers for Disease Control. People are thought to be most contagious when they are having symptoms. Some spread might be possible before people show symptoms. There have been reports of this occurring with coronavirus, but this is not thought to be the main way that the virus spreads. The main way it spreads is when people are having symptoms. It is spread through sharing of respiratory droplets, from coughing and that sort of thing. So what you can do to protect yourself is do not shake hands with anybody. Handshaking is done. Hugs are over. None of that. Try not to touch your face. I wish everyone luck with that. It's very, very hard not to touch your face. We all do it unconsciously. Deanna just did it just now. I did. She did. <laughs> and as a consequence, it's so important to keep your hands clean. So everybody should have uh, hand sanitizer with them at all times and wash your hands frequently. And you have to wash your hands with soap for at least 20 seconds for that to be effective. Today's props are all sorts of cleaning items that people should have at their desks at work. Uh, and certainly if you have come into contact with the public at work, and you should be regularly cleaning those services. Because the issue is that someone coughs, uh, might be just tiny droplets that land on a surface. We do not know how long the virus persists on a surface. That is something that we still don't have good science around. So again, we want to frequently clean surfaces, handrails, doorknobs, elevator buttons. If you share a uh, computer or keyboard, you know, clean it before you pass it off to your colleague, that sort of thing. Um, I do want to emphasize that given the continued spread of coronavirus across Montgomery County, we are recommending that public gatherings be canceled. And I want to again remind you of who is most at risk, the elderly, people with serious medical conditions, those that are immunocompromised. And I'm making this request to, to cancel public gatherings and even larger private gatherings for the sake of these individuals who are at risk of serious complications from this disease and don't, there's no specific treatment for them should they get severe complications. It's also important that we limit the spread to medical personnel and to our first responders. So we are asking that people cancel, postpone any sort of public gatherings and even larger private gatherings if you can do so. It's, it's just the thing that we need to do at this point to gather together as a community to help our friends and neighbors stay safe we must put our community before any of our personal convenience. I want to reiterate and reassure everyone that we have been planning for this eventuality. I want to continue to thank our county staff, our municipal partners, including all of our first responders, our school superintendents, uh, and numerous other people across our county for their cooperation and their calm and evidence-driven responses to this disease. And with that, I will take questions. The doc is the, uh, the lower Providence, or the, the Park Haven Township, uh, is that connected to the Children's Hospital, doctor? The, um, oh yeah, yeah. The question was whether or not the new case, presumptive positive that we announced today, 
is connected to the physician that was announced that works at the Child King of Prussia facility. All I'm going to say about that is that contact tracing has been completed, that we do know where this individual acquired the disease. It is from someone who was a previously announced presumptive positive and that this person is in isolation at home. His symptoms are such that he is able to stay at home and that's all I'm gonna say about it. Of the patients that were, were talked about yesterday, are any of them showing symptoms? Uh, the, I'm sorry? The patients sure. that, we, that were talked about yesterday. The people uh, in quarantine or the people that were tested positive? The, the patients that, that had contact with the, uh, the doctor from Children's Hospital, are, are any of them showing symptoms? The question is, are any of the patients of the doctor from uh, the CHOP facility, outpatient facility in King of Prussia, are any of them showing symptoms? As I said previously, we are not releasing data on that, but should any individual in the county have a test that comes up as a presumptive positive, we will let you know. Any updates on the contact tracing with the, the case described yesterday, um, the one in which contact tracing had not yet been completed? The 70-year-old. Yes, yeah. sorry. Right, so uh, the contact tracing for her is mostly done. We are, that particular case involved two counties, us and Philadelphia. Our two health departments are going to meet about her tomorrow and compare notes to make sure that we haven't missed anyone or missed any dir possible direct contact. Uh, at this point, at least on our side, we don't have a direct contact that we're aware of, of her you know, back to a presumptive positive case. But we, I still just wanna say that um, we're gonna have one more meeting about that tomorrow and make sure that nothing has slipped through the cracks. When you talk about canceling events, I've been hearing from different school officials in several different counties that there's some lack of a consistent message coming about whether they should have school, whether they should cancel concerts, what they should do with field trips. Right. And you're saying right now this is voluntary. Would you like to see, as a county leader and as a physician, some sort of stronger message from above is to kind of filter down to tell people what to do rather than just suggest? So today uh, we are we are advising that public events be canceled. We're recommending, I should say, that public events be canceled. And we remain in regular contact with our school superintendents. Should our contact tracing take us to a school district where there could have been a uh, contact there, we are letting that school district know and we're working with them on an individual basis and providing the support and advice that they request and working with them to help them make the best decision for their community. As uh, I've mentioned before, many of the children across our county get the most nutritious meal of the day at our schools. Parents' work schedules are built around their child's school day. So there are many decisions that need to be made around this. And I, um, so far we've had each school make the decision that's best for their community. We have not seen community spread in any of our schools at this point. So we're still at that phase where we're working with them to uh, decide whether or not to remain open. As we're moving now into things like um, sporting events and other things, when I am asked, I am suggesting that they postpone or cancel those events and um, you know, are working with them on an individual basis on that. And on that as a follow-up, clearly with social media, everybody gets to express an opinion. And so you see a lot of people saying, that's it, shut down the schools. But is it better to keep the kids in places where we know where they are rather than the opportunity to have people out in the communities, malls, movie theaters, sporting events, those kinds of things? Is it, is it the opinion, to, if you have no issues, keep them in school for that reason, and, uh, as well as the other reasons you're mentioning? I think that there are many reasons why a school should stay open, and it's very hard for me to answer a general question like that. I think it really depends on the individual circumstances at a school and what the degree of potential contact to that school is. So I, I really can't speculate on that. And then to the police officer, any concern now with upping protective gear or anything with first responders, um, given that this person is a police officer, he had contact with someone and we are not getting a clear picture as to where the contact it was the CHOP doctor or someone out in the community. So the contacts tracing for the police officer is well underway and uh, anyone who had contact with that police officer that, that we can determine had contact with that police officer will be notified as we go through our contact tracing. This might be a good time to mention that we're extremely fortunate here in Montgomery County. We have 50 police departments, 50 municipal police departments 
Uh, they all report to their local elected officials in their township. And then we also have some areas that are covered by the state police. This is a community that works together very, very well. They all have what are called mutual aid agreements. And so we anticipate no problems in being able to serve the citizens of Montgomery County as safely and effectively as we do every other day of the week. The person who you talked about who works in Montgomery County, can you say what area in Montgomery County they work? Uh, are you talking about the patient or the individual from Philadelphia? Here. Yeah. Yeah. They work in the eastern part of Montgomery County. This is sort of a follow-up on Jana's question. Um, when it comes to small groups, or uh, when it comes to large groups, or even um, when, when you when you talk about wanting to cancel large public events or, or recommending that, um, or even some larger private events, is there any way you can be any more specific about what constitutes a large event or a large or a larger private event? I'm reluctant to uh, put a specific number out there for the following reasons: people know who's coming to their event. So if they have people coming to their event from other states where uh, COVID-19 is really prevalent, that might give them pause. If they have people coming to their event that they know have serious medical conditions or immunocompromised, that would be another reason to reconsider. So, you know, it could be that someone's planning to have, you know, one other couple over for dinner, but, but there's a, a potential risk there to someone in that home. Or it could be that they're having an event with 25 people and, um, they all live right there in that neighborhood and everyone's perfectly healthy and no one's been anywhere near any area. So I, I don't want to put a number on it. I don't really think the number is the point. I think the point is who's coming and who is elderly or has an elderly parent in their home where being exposed could actually cause substantial risk. Speaking of numbers, do we have a number on how many people are in self-quarantine or being monitored that you're calling every day to check in on? I mean, we know it was the, the 13 patients and families, and now you've got the police officer and his family. Is there a number as to how many people you're monitoring at this point? As I said before, we do not give numbers on people that are being monitored or persons uh, under investigation, as they're called. So as soon as we have anybody that becomes positive, that's really the thing that matters. We will let you know. To be clear with the with the, the police officer, just to, to make this abundantly clear, you you have precautions in place that there is coverage and, and public safety is being handled, correct? Public safety is being handled. We have mutual aid agreements across the county that are will, will be put into place if necessary, and there are arrangements beyond that should we require any additional support in that area. And you've you've said repeatedly these last couple of days that tests you're not having any issues with, with number of tests and availability of tests? Does that continue? And what's the criteria for testing someone? What do, do they have to have symptoms? Do they? We are anticipating a increased need for testing capacity here in Montgomery County. This morning, I was on a phone call with the Center for Disease Control, the Food and Drug Administration, uh, Health and Human Services, Governor Wolf's office, and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. And we had a great discussion about the need for uh, increased capacity here in the county. And they are working together in a very collaborative way to increase test testing capacity here as quickly as possible. Any way to tell us what the test looks like? I think some people probably think it's a very specialized little box that you get. Is it a matter of a standard swab? Is it, is it that, you're gonna, that you're not going to run out of the test? So the test, the, um, the obtaining of the samples are two swabs, one from either the back of the throat or the cheek, and one from the nose. And then from there is where the holdup is. That's not really the issue. So the, the swabs do have to be stored in a certain way and then transmitted to the lab. And our uh, state Department of Health lab is getting additional capacity and then there's investigation with other, some of the private companies, if they can increase capacity. And the state, I believe, is starting to work with a number of our hospitals around the state to see if they can start doing the test. So I anticipate that relatively quickly there will be increased capacity for testing. With the police officer now testing positive, are there, what, what kind of planning is going in, uh, on in, in the, the county jail and also with courts? We continue to do contact tracing of any individual that this 
police officer may have come in contact with, and wherever that contact tracing leads us, um, we will go, we will go. Are there contingency plans for the county jail at this point? Absolutely. If we if we need them, we will have them in place. And again, I think that's a great point. I, I don't know if everyone heard that, but I was asked if there's contingency plans in our county correctional facility. Um, I mentioned that we have all kinds of contingency plans for our police. We have similar uh, contingency plans across the county here for all of our county services, and our county correctional facility is no uh, exception to that. So the correctional facility has already put in place some uh, restrictions around visitors and is, uh, I think at this point, visits are non-contact visits just for the protection of the individuals inside the correctional facility. And should they require additional staff there for any reason, there are plans that we can uh, activate to get them the, any support that they need. Courthouse, any plans to I need to direct you to my case at the courthouse for that. One question a lot of people seem to have is, should they be stocking up on things yet? Should they, a lot of, some stores have started putting in purchasing limits on things like toilet paper and some pantry yeah. products. Where do you stand on Great that? Great question. So the question was, should people be stocking up on things at home? And the answer to that is yes, but I have some few, a few specific things of what that should be. First of all, if you take any medications, this would be a good time to get an extra month's worth of medications. I want to thank all of our insurance, private health insurance companies across the state. They have lifted that normal 30-day maximum number of pills that you can get in a prescription, and they've waived that. So certainly, if there's any individuals out there who uh, can get out to the drug, drug stores in the next few days or have a friend go and get an extra month's worth of pills just to have them on hand, I think that would be a smart thing to do, and their insurance companies should allow that. Uh, if you have small children or anyone with specific dietary needs or a pet, you know, someone that really needs a certain type of a diet, it would be good to stock up on that. Um, and then other than that, just common sense. You know, we've all been through blizzards. We've been through hurricane preparation. We know how to do this here in Pennsylvania. So just take those common sense precautions. Have a little extra food in the cupboard. Uh, the goal is not that you don't have to leave your house for three weeks. The goal is that you reduce the number of times that you would need to leave your home. So, you know, particularly if you're in one of these at-risk categories. So if you can get yourself in a situation where maybe you only need to leave the house once a week instead of doing your daily shopping trip to the supermarket, that would be prudent right now. Anything you say to the families that are sitting there in their homes with their children that went to this CHOP facility that are either losing their minds or going stir crazy or just frustrated at this point because they did take their kids to the doctor and this shouldn't have happened. Well, I think the most important thing for everyone to remember is that 80% of people who get this disease have very mild symptoms. Even more importantly for this specific situation, there does not seem to be nearly um, as much impact on younger children, particularly those under about 10. And even in the teenage population, uh, there seems to be teenagers that are getting it, but they don't seem to be too affected. So that's the good news. Uh, it appears that most children are doing okay with this, or not even showing symptoms of it. So that's the most important message. And uh, you know, just know that everyone is sending all these individuals our absolute best wishes, and we have abundant hope that everyone will come out of this fine on the other side. But again, I just want to reiterate, this is why we do need to pull together as a community, work together in your neighborhood to see if you can pitch in and help somebody that might need some help. We must put our community before our personal convenience at this time so that we can keep everybody safe. The goal at this point is to, to keep um, the total number of people who end up having COVID-19 to as small a number as, as possible. We want to not overwhelm our hospitals. We don't want to overwhelm our EMS and first responders. So the more that we can just take these, these common sense precautions, this isn't going to be forever. This is for a confined period of time. There will be an end to this, and it won't be that far away. And the end will come quicker if we all take some measures right now to stop this thing now rather than let it drag on. As I said yesterday, we don't want to be Italy.
right? That's the message here. We should take steps now so that we don't find ourselves in a situation like Italy is in down the road. Should people be staying indoors on their free time or outdoors? Is there a difference? They can absolutely be outdoors. Um, and, and people can go take walks and go for a run. And in fact, that is probably one of the best things that you could do, get outside, breathe some fresh air, get some sunshine. Uh, if you're walking in areas where you are maybe with a family member, so you know what their story is, you, know, you can just keep a few feet away from others that you don't know. Practice what's called social distancing. So we're encouraging people that do have to stand in a line for some reason. Try to stay six feet apart if that's possible. That's a pretty safe distance to not actually um, uh, con contract the disease. So the state's gonna give a briefing in about four minutes. And I know that we won't get you again until this time tomorrow. That's Are correct. you expecting them to be coming out with any other numbers or do you not know yet until they say it? I am In not aware Montgomery from Montgomery County that they're going to announce anything new at 4 o'clock. Um, if they are, then that has been something that's happened basically while I've been in this room, which is not to say it couldn't, but I don't believe so. I'm not aware of that. Yeah. All right. So we will see you all tomorrow or whoever wants to come. Thank you very much. <laughs>